Gamma Joba, on uh, Europe Days I made the invitation to all of you to post questions to me about the European Union, about the EU-Georgia relations and whatever else. And uh, I'm told that we got quite many questions. And today now I'm going to do my best to answer as many of them as possible. So uh, here we go. So thank you, Georgo, for that question. It's always a challenge, of course, to um, answer this question, which is, of course, very complex with uh, some, some clear answers. Um, but if I were to give it a try, I would probably say that there are two aspects to uh, European path. One is about standards, regulations and laws all the things that is needed for a country to modernize and in this case bring Georgia closer to the European Union. All of that is contained in a handbook, a manual, which is our association agreement. The other part of the answer would be values, which is something that we stress a lot, our common values. And here I'm talking about democracy, the rule of law and uh, human rights in the first place. And if you'd like, uh, values is about how you use those laws and regulations, for what purpose and how do you make sure that they fit into a society which is taking care of its population, respectful of its rights. And all of that uh, together is part of moving ahead on the European path, to my mind. Right, three ingredients for this recipe, I would say, laws and regulations and acting on the values. Um, because after all, without uh, implementation of laws, these laws will come to nothing. So it's important that they are also implemented in practice. When it comes to uh, values and how to implement them, one important aspect is to make sure that there are strong institutions around that can follow this implementation and make sure that the intended objectives are being fulfilled. I'm speaking about the parliament, for example, the parliament in this country gained further powers with the latest constitutional changes and can act as a watchdog to make sure that the implementation is really following the objectives that was desired. Other actors are NGOs, civil society, um, uh, an ombudsman's office, both for business and for, for uh, human rights related aspects, and media, uh, also an important uh, watchdog to make sure that implementation is taking place uh, as intended. Thank you Taco and Taco for uh, these questions about educational possibilities and here I'm very happy uh, to give you a straight answer which is our Erasmus Plus program here which to my mind has been a tremendous success already with more than 5,000 students and academic staff who have used the opportunity to study in Europe and vice versa, uh, European students coming here to Georgia. And both of them are bringing something more than just uh, educational experiences. It's about people-to-people -people contacts, it's about skills, it's about uh, uh, future contacts to build on. And uh, all of this is going very well. Uh, during my watch, I've been proud to add another 800 extra scholarships 
available. So the opportunities are there. Uh, you can go to the link. I, I think we can post here below and uh, find out more information about these possibilities. And if you are personally interested in making such applications, I wish you the very best of luck in that. This is a very important question and something that we're all struggling to, to cope with. Um, I would say that um, you can be very reckless with lies, but you have to be very careful about the truth. And that means uh, that you have to find different ways of dealing with it, this phenomenon of fake news so it doesn't become counterproductive. And I would say the first thing is to make sure that you are out there to spot the fake news and you are there to counter it. And when you're doing that, you need to think about having a coordinated response. And that should be together the state, together with the uh, media, um, NGOs and others who can be there to counter any arguments that are simply not truthful. The second part, which I usually stress in this situation is that you have to think about your own domestic media environment um, because you need people to turn to your domestic media for the truth as a natural thing which means that you have to have high quality and high ethical standards in your own media environment and this is something that you can continue building on to make sure that people have a place to go uh, when they would like to know the truth. Uh, final issue in all of this is what I would call media literacy, which is basically how well trained and educated the population is to spot the difference between a lie and what is truthful and high standard uh, uh, reporting. Um, and Part of that is also about, again, making sure that there is a high standard in the journalistic core. We're trying to uh, promote that, including with our uh, EU prize for uh, journalism, uh, which I recently launched and which is about rewarding journalism uh, for, with the highest professional and ethical standards. Uh, again, to uh, be part of creating a media environment where people can turn to uh, in situations uh, of fake news around specific issues. Thank you, Dato. First, perhaps your point about solidarity, which I think is very important and something that we have seen both here in Georgia and in Europe over the last couple of weeks uh, as part of our response to the COVID crisis. And I think this is an asset that I hope we will all carry with us as we're moving out from the most uh, dire state of the health crisis. Now, when it comes to lessons learned from this, I would say that on the one hand, I think you are right that uh, when it comes to issues such as food security and energy security and so on, it's something that everyone needs to think about because in, in times of crisis, whether it's about the pandemic or something else, one needs to make sure that one can sustain. Uh, um, at the same time, I would say um, that a small country like Georgia cannot afford to become isolated or self-sufficient. At the end of the day, this country will prosper so much more from being an open economy as it is, trading with others, and, um, and for this reason we are and will continue to try to help Georgian companies as much as possible 
to find markets in Europe and elsewhere because that gives the possibilities also for this, this country and for the population to import goods from other countries which over time will bring so much more prosperity than trying to do it by yourself. Thank you, Aliko. Um, this is a tricky question. Uh, you know, already today there exist some possibilities for Georgian to work uh, in individual member states. Um, but how fast and how far this will go is something I simply cannot answer today. I know that this government and this president is pushing this agenda very much with uh, Georgia's European partners. I am, in principle, very uh, supportive of these efforts because I think opening up such possibilities is good for bringing in additional income, it's good for skills transfers, it's good for people and people contact, for that matter, uh, and uh, it's good also uh, to find legal ways of employment that could possibly unhinge some of the problems we're currently seeing with the functioning of the visa liberalization uh, mechanism we're having. So for all these reasons, I think it's a good thing. Uh, and uh, I will be there to, to support um, further exploration of these possibilities. I think that's all I can say at this point. Well, um, I think this pandemic, as we know, is clearly a global challenge and uh, Europe has been hard hit, but it's not the only one. Um, with regard to our member states, I would say probably in the beginning, everyone was looking for their own solution. But what we have seen very clearly over these past couple of weeks is how all the member states have been coming together around the same table in the European Union to look for common solutions. And we have seen that and we're seeing that when it comes to uh, some of the economic consequences. We're also seeing it when it comes to tourism industry and other such sectors where the principle of solidarity is taking a, a clear hold in the European Union. And also we have seen in the case of Italy, I know that um, France have, uh, have donated more than one million face masks to uh, Italy. Germany have donated seven tons, uh, I'm told, of medical equipment. And I believe that Germany, Austria and Luxembourg have also offered patients from Italy to be treated in their hospitals. So I think what we have seen uh, after the initial shock, if you'd like, has been more and more of Europe coming together. So I'm not so afraid that uh, the end result of this is not going to be what usually is the case in the European Union, namely after a crisis, we're coming out stronger together. Now, with regard to, um, to enlargement, and you're mentioning Serbia and Albania, just to say that both of these countries have already a, uh, an EU perspective. Um, it will still require um, further hard work to advance on this path. Uh, but um, as you know from, from this region, we already have one member state, which is Croatia, who happens to hold the presidency of the European Union right now. First, perhaps to, to say that um, the, the good news is that, in fact, what this government and previous government has been doing has very clearly advanced Georgia already uh, in a, an impressive way towards Europe. I and mean, it's something that our member states in the European Union 
has duly recognized and we feel quite a bit of admiration for the fact that Georgia has been taking these steps. But of course, your second point about the force of the population and the will of the population is very important. The fact that so many Georgians, the vast majority of Georgians support these ambitions is to my mind not only making this process sustainable over time, but I would say even inevitable. And for me, that is uh, a real cause for optimism and also giving me quite a bit of strength in the work I'm trying to do here. Albert, well, I would say it cannot really be called a lie since it was never a promise, but neither have any doors to this route being closed either. But where we are right now in our relationship is on the basis of the association agreement, uh, 740 pages setting up a way uh, forward for Georgia to advance on political association and economic integration with the European Union and a, an agreement that have already led to a number of uh, big successes. First of all, the opening up of uh, the internal market of the European Union to Georgian products, the visa liberalization, the Erasmus program and our student exchanges, and we're seeing that happening day by day. But this is how European integration works. Uh, and how we would like to advance together will be a decision that will be taken later on and will depend on where the European Union is, but also what Georgia will want, what its population will want in the years to come. But what we're doing right now is European integration on the basis of a very profound and uh, deep partnership and friendship and uh, we'll see where the future is heading. So, Maya, um, well, first I should say that as an EU ambassador, I simply don't have a mandate to speak about NATO membership, so I won't do that. Uh, let me instead pick up on your other point, which is about the strength and the identity of Georgia and the Georgian population, which is something I fully agree with you and something that I have felt being here on the ground for more than one and a half years now. Uh, the strength in this country and in this population. My former boss, uh, President Tusk, said uh, last summer when he was visiting Batumi that Georgia is a small country but a great nation. And I think he really captured an, an important essence in all of this. And just to say that building on that is going to be very important, will be very important, and at the end of the day, when it comes to Georgia's choice of partners and how far you would like to go in these partnerships, um, you should always do that from a position of strength and not from a position of weakness. Thank you. Well, as the EU ambassador, I will not be commenting on NATO in my answer, but let me instead pick up on your, your question about the conflicts 
asking for some good old determination, which I fully support. Just to say that the European Union, who is standing behind Georgia's sovereignty and territorial integrity, is already doing that beyond words, because we have, first of all, the UMM monitoring mission, more than 200 people up on the uh, ABL, uh, who provide the eyes and ears uh, of not only the European Union, but I would say the whole international community. And they're doing a tremendous important job. Second track is that we are engaged and have been engaged for long in the diplomatic talks, trying to find a way forward with regard to the conflicts. And finally, we are complementing and trying to help the Georgian government in its engagement policy, which is another important track. But as you say, good old determination is needed. And I think, if anything, we should be uh, more forthcoming, all of us, in order to advance this uh, uh, further. Um, not for the sake of principles only, but for the sake of all those people on both sides of the administrative boundary line who today are suffering far too much. Well, thank you, Pata, for this question. While I sense a bit of irony. I also sense uh, a lot of depth in what you're asking. So let me do my best to give you a straight answer. First of all, to say that EU and Georgia has over many years been working together to advance judicial reform. And I think we have made a lot of progress together. Uh, Georgia has clearly met, made a lot of headway when it comes to improving the standards including in the judiciary, but it is uh, a work that needs to continue. And uh, in that work, the European Union will remain a very strong partner. Um, coming to the issue of the judiciary itself, I think there are two ingredients that are of key importance. The first one is to strive for the highest level of professionalism. And the second one is to strive for the highest level of integrity. And by combining these two aspects, that's how you build trust in the judiciary. Uh, trust from the side of the population side um, and from different uh, sides of the political spectrum alike. Uh, and this is a struggle that needs to continue. It's very important to move ahead on this path. It's by no means uh, an issue that is making Georgia unique. It's something that other countries uh, are still struggling and trying to cope with, but it needs to be there as a motivation for the future. Uh, now, let me mention one aspect when it comes to uh, trust in the judiciary, um, something that brings me to the 8 March agreement, because at that point uh, we got uh, a broad agreement between all political parties here in Georgia, not only to change the electoral system in view of the upcoming elections, but also a joint desire to address any appearances of politicization in the judicial and the electoral process. Uh, and this is a pledge uh, which I, I believe very much in, which I think is good, uh, and very important, um, and uh, you, you could argue that it's uh, never more important than in an election year to make sure that you are ridding yourself of any such appearances, to build trust and make sure that you are uh, paving the way for a uh, competitive and positive electoral process. Uh, and this is what uh, this country, this population really deserves, to my mind. And therefore, I've had uh, the opportunity also over the last couple of weeks to sometimes make commentary with regard to that uh, uh, implementation, uh, because I find it so crucial that both the letter and spirit of the 8th March Agreement, for what it gives, uh, to uh, to Georgia and Georgian democracy is going to 
come to a successful um, conclusion. Oh my gosh, I think we ran out of questions. So um, thanks for everyone who has been asking these questions and thanks to everyone who has been watching this video until its end. Um, I'm very grateful for getting these questions. I hope you will find that some of my answer at least uh, were of some use to you all. And with that, I conclude Europe Day 2020. Looking forward to uh, keeping up this type of conversation uh, with you also in the future. Thank you so much, Didi Madlova.